Juan Seiben, and we're checking out the Amazon Fire TV stick today. So this is the Fire TV now in stick form. So it's a little less powerful, but uh, it is a full Android computer on a stick. So it does a little bit more perhaps than the Roku streaming stick does, which is mostly a video player. And it certainly does a lot more than the Chromecast in that you can uh, pretty much not only watch videos on here, but also play games and run other Android apps that are either available through Amazon store uh, or sideloaded through some developer stuff that I'll show you in a little bit. So a uh, pretty capable little machine. It's got a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, it also has eight gigabytes of internal flash storage and it's running with a dual core uh, Broadcom Cortex A9 processor. So it's got uh, some actually some hefty little specs under the under the very stick like hood here. Uh, there is a USB port. This is strictly for power and actually they recommend uh, using their external power adapter with this because most TVs don't supply enough power through their USB port. Uh, so you're gonna need to plug it into the wall. It's got a long cable here uh, to connect it to its power adapter and then you plug uh, the stick into your television. They also give you an HDMI extension cable uh, if you run into some trouble there. It also has Bluetooth on board so you can use game controllers with it. So when I, we get to the game section, I will show you uh, how those work with it. It does come with a remote, um, although unlike the Fire TV, the larger, more expensive unit, uh, it doesn't have voice search built into the remote. So it's more of a basic remote, but it's certainly usable and I haven't had real issues with it. Uh, you can add a voice search capability by buying the voice remote that the Fire TV has. Uh, that costs $30. This costs $39. So you're going to be really, for all the accessories, you're going to cost at or just slightly below what it costs to actually buy the device itself. Uh, so if you don't need the voice search, it's probably not necessary. You can also install an app. I couldn't find it on the iPhone yet, but it is apparently on Android, so you can uh, do voice searches through there. Now, Amazon has built a very attractive interface around this device. It's very similar. In fact, I think it's probably identical uh, to the Fire TV. And of course, the first place they bring you is to uh, the Prime Video section, which is all the things that they have uh, to offer you as a Prime member, but also things that you can then, of course, rent or purchase through uh, the movie section as well. So they kind of direct you into uh, their stuff first, and then you can kind of scroll down and get into the apps that you might want to use, uh, for example, to use like Netflix or uh, get to a game or something like that. So uh, what is nice about it, though, is that just like the uh, the Fire TV, um, they're very good at anticipating what you're going to want to watch. So if I go over to my video library, for example, we'll go to something that um, I've purchased prior. So uh, we'll switch back to our desk shot here and we'll pull up uh, Mythbusters that I had purchased uh, through my Amazon account. And if I go to uh, resume here, it should pretty much start almost immediately because it's anticipating where I was uh, last left off. So you don't get a lot of buffering. It just kind of starts up right away because it's doing some things in the background uh, to kind of get you ready for uh, watching the show. So it's, it's very responsive. It's a little bit you know, slower than uh, the, the Fire TV, which has got a lot more hardware to play with because it is a larger device. Um, but I have found it to really not be all that much different when uh, poking around and using it uh, for mostly media con consumption. So that's been pretty good. Uh, there are other video apps, of course. You've got Netflix, like I said, and YouTube. Uh, so all of those major services are also available on here as well. So you do have uh, access to just about everything. And Plex is on here too. So it's a pretty capable media player. Um, certainly, uh, you know, as good as everything else out there at the moment. You know, most of these players have all these apps. It performs pretty much the same uh, as all of those other players do. So I think if you have uh, some attachment to a particular service and you, you know, do your research and make sure it's included on the Fire Stick, uh, it will perform are pretty much as you would expect it to perform. Now, what's interesting though, is that unlike every other stick I have tried so far, at least from the major manufacturers, uh, this one can also play games. So we're gonna fire up our Bluetooth remote control and I've loaded up Sonic CD, which is kind of a refresh of that 16-bit classic. And as you can see here, uh, it runs very nicely. The colors are nice and everything, you know, performs like it does uh, on higher end Android devices. So a uh, pretty capable little device here, good for this kind of casual game. You know, I would say a lot of those newer, you know, really high-end 3D games are not going to perform as well, uh, but really for, again, a lot of the tablet and uh, casual games that are written for these kinds of processors, uh, those should work just fine. I'm not sure uh, if Amazon is you know, kind of differentiating what will work on the stick versus the, the TV, uh, but most of the apps that I had on, this, on the TV version are now running on the stick without too many issues. But again, I think you want to be you know, really realistic about this, that you're not going to go in and run the latest uh, you know, high-end 3D game on here and expect to have good results. Uh, the other thing you can do, though, is sideload things, and that takes a little bit more effort, but uh, because this is an Android device, you can actually load other apps into it. So let's take a look at what some of those look like.
Now, I'm not going to go through the steps of side loading at the moment. There are some sites on the internet that can uh, give you some step-by-step -step instructions. And if you think that might be something you'd like me to do for you, uh, please let me know and I'll do a follow-up video on that. But basically what happens is you turn the uh, device into developer mode and then you can load in applications uh, using a command line interface from the Android development kit. So it's not easy, uh, but you can get those apps in here. And what you do is kind of scroll over to this application section after those apps are installed and then you can find them in here. So they're really not going to pop up on the main menu. You've got to dig all the way into this menu here uh, and then try to look for them and find them in the box here. So I did install a bunch of stuff that I'll review with you. We're going to start though with XBMC, uh, which is a great media player that I know everyone on Android uh, always wants to run uh, as their preferred home theater device. And this actually works quite well. So what I'll do uh, is go and just browse over to my uh, WD My Cloud. And what I usually do is pop up one of my uh, backed up Blu-ray MKVs. So I'll just pop open the Star Trek movie real quick and you'll get a feel for uh, how that runs. If you've got good Wi-Fi coverage, uh, you're going to be in good shape. The key is uh, to keep this relatively close, especially when you're doing something like a Blu-ray MKV, uh, keep it close to your Wi-Fi access point because otherwise it's going to kind of stutter and fail out pretty quick. There's no Ethernet. There's no ability to put Ethernet in here. The OTG cables don't work with this device. Uh, so you're going to need a really good Wi-Fi signal, uh, especially when you're pushing a lot of heavy bandwidth over it. But, you know, it's able to play the movie. It seems to be running pretty well. I would say uh, it runs as well as it does on the Roku streaming stick, which was a real surprise for me that we could run uh, Blu-ray MKVs on something like this. And uh, it is working just, just nicely. Again, this is over the network uh, streaming from a WD My Cloud. Uh, it does also pass digital audio to a home theater receiver. Uh, like most devices, it doesn't do like the top end lossless audio from Dolby Digital and from DTS. So you're not going to get the DTS. I think it's the MA or the Dolby Digital True HD or whatever it's called. Uh, but you do get regular Dolby Digital and you also get regular regular DTS. So uh, it is, again, capable of doing all of that. Interestingly, uh, the Chromecast will not pass digital audio in this way to a home theater receiver. So you do get uh, you know, a little bit better audio out of here, especially if you're using a home theater receiver and using all of you know, the surround sound and everything. Uh, even Amazon's own content will also stream uh, over that as well. So again, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but it certainly uh, gets the job done. If you want to watch a Blu-ray MKV, it can do that. And of course, if you're using Plex or something else, I mean, if it can play this, it will certainly uh, play stuff with, uh, you know, lower bandwidth. And I'm getting a little bit of stuttering here, and I think this might be a result of it being too far from my uh, Wi-Fi access points. Now, the Fire Stick running XBMC can also tune my cable television tuner I use here in the house, the HD Home Run. I have a whole series of videos on that if you're curious as to what it does. But uh, what, basically what it does is it interfaces with my digital cable and I can stream it over my local network. Uh, it's not ideal because you really want to stream this kind of content via Ethernet just because it's MPEG-2 and it's got a lot more uh, packets and everything. But uh, it does uh, bring those things up very quickly and uh, does have a decent frame rate on there as well. But let's see uh, some other things that might tax this a little bit more. We're going to check out some emulation. Uh, next thing we're going to try is a Nintendo 64 emulator. All right, here we have Mupen 64 Plus running Wave Race on uh, the device here. It's a little bit slow. I would say we're definitely not getting the full frame rate out of it. This is certainly pushing uh, this device to its absolute <laughs> limits, I would say. Uh, so I don't know if this is going to be all that playable, but uh, you can get a feel for you know what the probably the endpoint is for this. But uh, there are some things that do run better. So we'll pop out of here real quick and we'll go over to uh, a Super Nintendo emulator that uh, does do a better job. You can see again just how cumbersome it is to kind of get through all this because you have to go back out to the main menu, go back into the settings screen, uh, pop into the applications and then uh, go, to, go down here and then kind of scroll down to where you want to uh, run something else. But the fact that they haven't locked you out completely from doing this, I guess that is kind of a, a good thing. So uh, that was not so bad. And here we'll just run uh, uh, Turtles in Time here and you can get a feel for the fact that this actually runs quite nicely on, uh, on the Fire Stick. So classic games are going to run fine. You know, anything from the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis on back shouldn't be a problem for the Fire Stick. Anything beyond that, uh, at least as far as emulation is concerned, will uh, tax it more than it's probably capable of delivering on. But uh, again, this is a $39 stick that you plug into the back of your television. This would have been uh, unbelievable <laughs> to even think about even 10 years ago. So it uh, works pretty well. The controllers work great with it. Uh, so overall, I think it's a uh, the Fire Stick is a great value in that it does a lot more than play media. Uh, you don't need to tether your phone to it like you would with the Chromecast. You can run apps on it. You can certainly run uh, games, both uh, side-loaded games like we 
we saw here and some of the Android games from the Amazon App Store, the more casual games, uh, will all run just great on here. So really, you know, the, the choice, I think, is if you're looking at the Fire TV, the more expensive uh, box version that has more RAM, more memory to run things, uh, and it also has a much faster processor, uh, this is slower but also cheaper. So it can do uh, a lot of the things that the larger device can do, uh, but not all of them, especially when it comes to more high-end gaming. So that's really the big differentiator. So I think for a lot of people, uh, this $39 device is really all you're going to need, especially if you have a good Wi-Fi signal near where your television is. And I think this is a great way, if you have a dumb TV, uh, to make it a lot smarter. And if you're living within Amazon's Prime ecosystem, this is a great uh, choice as well, because this is really probably, you know, the two Fire TV devices are probably the best way uh, to watch Amazon content. And you can also, of course, get uh, Netflix on there too. So that is the Amazon Fire TV stick. And this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.